Did you know that Denmark has a queen? She's actually quite the lady. I'm going to tell you a little bit about her today. Stay tuned. Hi there and welcome back. If you're new to my channel, my name is Kelly and I'm an American who lives in Denmark. Being an American, that tells you that I don't really know a whole lot about royalty, right? I didn't grow up with kings and queens and things. The closest thing that we had were Disney princesses. So when I moved to Denmark, it was a little bit of a culture shock having to be surrounded by people who were quite interested in their royal family. But I have to say it's also kind of a neat experience. Before I get a little bit into that, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please consider doing that. I really would love to have you along. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Now let's get to the good stuff. Today we're going to be talking about Queen Margrethe II of Denmark and some things that I think it would be fun for people who don't really know anything about the royals of Denmark to know about her. She is actually a fantastic queen. She's got a little bit of spunk, she's got personality, and she's very talented. So there's some things that I'm going to be telling you today. If you're Danish, you might know them already. But if you're a foreigner, chances are you don't know any of these things. And I really would love to share them with you guys. First off, a little bit of background with me and royalty. Obviously, again, as I said, as an American, we don't grow up following along a royal family because we don't have one in the U.S. But we do tend to be interested in the British royals. I wouldn't say all of us are interested. I would say a lot of us probably don't care. But I know in the 1980s, Princess Diana was really popular. She was really popular with a lot of people in the U.S. and I absolutely loved her. But when I moved to Denmark, I was really interested in the royal family. I wanted to know more about them. I wanted to know if this fascination and this love for Princess Diana that I had as a little girl could be similar to the love that I could feel for the Danish royals, you know? And of course, as English speakers or Americans tend to say things about love, it's just, you know, your, your fondness for them. I don't know any of them personally, so I can't really say that I love any of them. But what do I want to tell you today about the queen? So Denmark has a queen, Margrethe II, and she, as of right now in 2021, is a grandma. She's got two kids. She's got a bunch of grandkids. You know, she's got like that typical life going on, but she's also a queen. <laughs> I can't imagine. But every time I see pictures of her, I watch her on TV or in the news, she just seems so down to earth. And I think that's why I like her. You know, when you always see Queen Elizabeth from England on TV. She seems very strict and very serious all the time. And you kind of have a feeling that it would be very difficult to grow up in that family because of how she is. And I don't know her personally either, so I don't know. But when you talk about Migreta, and I just want to call her Margot. <laughs> in the US, if your name was Margaret, we would nickname you Margo. So I just feel like I want to call her Margo because she's got that feeling like she could be your friend kind of thing. But Margo is not a name that you would find in Denmark. And actually, my number one thing that you should know about Queen Margrethe II is that her nickname is actually Daisy. And it's so weird, though, because it's like, how do you get Daisy from Margrethe? Well, from what I have heard, Daisy is actually a nickname for people whose name is Margaret in the UK. So evidently they don't go with the Margot as we do. Maybe they do, maybe they don't, I don't know. But it was a nickname that was given to her by family members and it just stuck. It's not something that we as commoners would call her, but she's actually called that by family members and close friends. That's really interesting because I don't know if there's a lot of royal people who actually have nicknames like that. One thing that's kind of interesting along with that nickname is the fact that you'll find a lot of jewelry that has a daisy on it. A lot of, you know, gold necklaces, gold bracelets, rings, and it's got that white daisy with the yellow center. And that all kind of ties in with Queen Margrethe. 
Another thing that I kind of like about her, you know, is the idea that she's very chill. You know, and I, I said that before, that she's kind of down to earth, but there have been pictures that people have taken with her out and about. It's not like paparazzi, you know, catching a candid picture of her when nobody's looking. This is kind of how she, she is when she's out and about, or at least it's how she used to be. I have heard she's changed her image a little bit. Um, I don't know why though. Hey, why not? You're the queen, do what you want. But there's one picture in particular that I remember seeing, or maybe it was a video clip, where she's got a cigarette and she's got a juice box. <laughs> Can you imagine the Queen of England with a juice box? <laughs> oh my God. No, you can't, but the Queen of Denmark can drink out of one. Hmm. Uh, that's just kind of the type of person you would want to be your queen, right? Somebody who's cool like that, you know? She's... She doesn't need fancy champagne, eh, she'll just take a juice box. My number three thing that you should know about Queen Margrethe of Denmark is that she is a fantastic artist. It's so interesting, in my opinion, that someone who has this high position that still kind of does a lot of her hobbies in a way. But for her, she hasn't really let being a queen get in the way of her artistic expression. And I think that is really cool about her. She has done some illustrations for different versions of The Lord of the Rings. She also has some of her art pieces on display in different museums throughout Denmark. And she also works on designing costumes and, and different things for the Royal Ballet. I mean, how often do you hear things like that? She doesn't need to be doing all these extra things, but she does them. Sometimes there's TV specials where she's showing you how to make crafty things. And it's just, it's really cool in my opinion that she has a love of something that she wants to share with people. And I think that's cool. I mean, really, what do we know about a lot of other royals? You know, they don't really share a lot about themselves with people. And I think that's so awesome that she does that. It's like she invites us into her life, you know, into her home. And that's pretty cool. My number four thing, again, that I think is pretty cool about Queen Margrethe is that she was a trained squad leader from 1958 to 1970 in the Female Flying Corps. And this is kind of like a volunteer, um, I don't want to say military, but it's a volunteer group that works with the military. I think at one point in time before they allowed women to kind of serve in the military alongside men equally as men, she was in this other group because being in charge of a country, being the king or queen, you are actually also in charge of the armed forces. So that's combining four and five. She's in charge of the armed forces. She's like the head of all that stuff, which I think is absolutely crazy. But what's cool about her is my number four, the fact that she did all this training of, of things that they would do in this voluntary service to help people in the army. She did what she could way back when to kind of earn her title as being leader of the armed forces, which I think is really cool. Now this group no longer exists because like I said, they kind of brought women into the military and so they're accepted it as equals, especially because these women were the ones who kind of paved the way for other women to be in the military. So what could be cooler than being the commander in chief to the Danish military? <laughs> well, my number six is the fact that every New Year's Eve, she gives a New Year's address speech to all of Denmark, but not all of Denmark. She also talks to the Danes that live outside of Denmark. And I have to tell you, being married to a Danish guy, living in the USA for nine years, he looked forward to that all the time because she remembered him in that speech. It was not just that also she talks to Danes in Denmark, you know, she talks to people who aren't Danish who live in Denmark. She's very open to accepting everybody. And she really is caring about the people who live in this country. She's just really supportive of people and she's caring. And I think that's really cool. You can learn more about that speech and other things that we do in Denmark on New Year's Eve on my blog post. I'm gonna put a link in the description. I also have a video on that. I'll put it in the description too. Number seven, and this one she has no control over, but I think it's really interesting to mention. She was actually born one week after the Nazis occupied Denmark. 
I can't imagine being her mother and being pregnant and about to have a baby at any point in time and then have the future queen of Denmark be born under Nazi occupation. That is just crazy. Obviously being the queen, that means she was the first child of the then king and queen of Denmark. But I can't imagine the amount of stress or uncertainty that went with her birth in knowing that this child is one day going to be the queen of Denmark and she's being born in a time that's a little crazy and perhaps dangerous and yeah, I just think that's crazy. Number eight, which I think is pretty cool, is that she met her husband when she was studying in London and she's Danish in England and her husband is a, was a French diplomat. It is so crazy with all of these cultures kind of blending. But you know, as an American, again, we don't really know a whole lot about royalty. We think, okay, well, you're a princess, so you should probably marry a prince, or you know what I mean? Well, you're the one in line for the throne, so who do you marry? <laughs> we learn about all this stuff on TV, I swear to God. We learn about it on TV for the most part. But with, you know, these new royal weddings that have come up with the English people, you know, William married a girl that he had met when he was in school. She was just a girl from England, right? And you have Prince Harry marrying an American. Who would have thunk that? But she was actually studying. And I think it's really cool that she went to a lot of different universities and kind of studied around. And I live so close to the town of Aarhus and she actually spent some time studying there. And it just it just kind of blows my mind, you know what I mean? Again, because we don't have anything like that. We don't have a royal family. But just to know that, you know, these are these are real people and they go out into real schools and mix with people and, and blend and they have these regular experiences a lot like what we do. I think that's really cool that she was able to go to London to study and that she met her husband there. And it's really cool that she got to choose him, you know? She didn't have to marry a prince of somewhere else. Number nine is that she's the oldest of three. And when I talk about how crazy kind of it is, the fact that she married, he's a diplomat, but seriously, he's not like a prince, you know what I mean? Some guy from France. I just think it's really kind of cool because her sisters actually did marry into other royal families. So she's kind of going her own path. I just think that's really kind of cool about her. You know, she's making her own decisions. And even though she has the responsibility over her shoulders to be the queen of Denmark, she still kind of does what she wants. And that's kind of, I don't know, something you have to admire about her. I mean, she's a no nonsense kind of lady and I really like her. I'm not going to get too much into her sisters and everything because I have another video coming out or already out, I don't know, depending on when you're watching this video, about the royal family. So you'll have to check out that other video where I talk about the other members of the Danish royal family. My number 10 thing that I think is actually quite cool about the Queen of Denmark is that she has her own motto. Now again, I'm an ignorant American. <laughs> It doesn't mean I'm stupid, it just means that I don't know. And so if you do know, you can feel free to let me know in the comments because I'm someone who is interested in learning, not someone who is interested in being insulted. There is a difference. But I really think it's cool she has her own motto. And that motto is, God's help, the love of the people, and Denmark's strength. Really shows that she has Denmark's interest at heart. And I really like that. It's something really nice, you know? But she still is very supportive of the people who live in Denmark. And she loves her country. And I think that's really great. Number 11 <laughs> of things that I think are pretty cool about the Queen is that she has her own... Oh, I don't even know what this is called. She's got her own... What is it? She's got a big M. <laughs> So when you go to different places that are royal, there is a big M because it stands for Mark Ida, right? And you could also see, oh my gosh, that she's on money, right? She's on money. And she's got, like here, can you see it? There's the M, right? 
So you can see the M and then there's a heart above it. Yeah, our money's funky. It's got a hole in it. But she's got a lot of hearts on stuff. And I mean, I like hearts. And she's got the M's. I like, I like her little design that she's got here. You see this? She's got the crowns. So she's got an M with the heart and the crowns and an M and a crown and an M. And it just kind of goes around. And it's really decorative. And you see this on a lot of different things that are for the royal family. And of course, when she's no longer the queen and her oldest son becomes the king, all of that will change. So I can't quite imagine what all that would look like. You know, I asked my husband that one time, I'm like, well, so they changed all of it for her? And he's like, yeah. But of course, she's been the queen of Denmark since 1972 when her dad died. And so this money has been around for, for quite a while. And you know, I don't know. Yeah, it has a date on the bottom. This one's from 2004, but I absolutely just love how the money has the hearts on it. I think that's a, a nice little touch. Makes you wonder though, when the crown prince will become the king, what will his money look like? And will we even use money then? Because everything is kind of online and digital. Things to think about. Number 12. <laughs> One thing that I think is really cool about the queen, and I don't know if this maybe belongs to the royal family, but my husband says it's the queen's, I don't know, is that she has her own boat. My husband grew up outside of Sunnebor, which is the southern part of Denmark, and they have um, the boat there sometimes. And the very first time that I had ever seen the boat, we were there vacationing. This was before we moved to Denmark. And... It was just really cool. You know what I mean? The fact that, oh, the queen's the queen's around, her boat's here. And you're like, what? <laughs> you mean the queen? She's here? She's she's around? It's actually called the Royal Yacht Danabro or Her Royal Majesty's Yacht Danabro. <laughs> I don't know, it's got a really long name. So this boat or yacht, I mean it's it's quite large, you know. It's something that's actually used by not just the queen, but also the royal family. So, you know, the crown prince and the princess and their kids and stuff. They use it when they go on summer trips in different Danish waterways, I guess. But they also use it when they are going abroad. They are on that boat. So it could be that they're traveling to Sweden by boat or Norway by boat. That's just crazy to think about. But it's also pretty cool to get your own boat. Another thing that I think is super cool, but also a little bit posh, but hey, she's a queen, right? She's got nine castles. Nine castles. <laughs> and it's not like, oh, where do I sleep tonight, you know? She's got one main castle. It's called Amalienborg, and it's in Copenhagen. And you could seriously walk around the grounds in front of where she lives. There's guards there, but that's about it. It's totally chill. There's not some big gate like Buckingham Palace, you know what I mean? It's, it's right in the middle of the city. It's quite amazing. But she's got nine castles in total. And sometimes they take trips where they go and they stay at a different castle. One of the very first castles that I ever visited when I moved to Denmark was actually the one in Kostein, which is like a summer house for them. But we were there in December, so nobody was around. Another one of the castles, Rosenborg Castle, is also in Copenhagen. That's actually where the queen's jewels are kept. So it's not like she's living there or anything, but that's where she keeps her jewels, which is kind of interesting that they're all the way in a different place in Copenhagen. But what's really cool about them, so a little side note, not so cool about her, but just cool in general, is that they're one of the only royal jewels that's open to the public. So if you were touring Copenhagen, for example, and you wanted to check them out, you could. They're on display. Just go on over, Rosenborg Castle. Check them out. That's it for me. There are plenty of things I'm sure that are really cool about the Queen of Denmark. And if you've got something that I didn't mention, go ahead and write it down in the comments below. I would love to learn something new about my queen and your queen. And if you've got questions for me, maybe it's something I can look up or help you with, go ahead and write those down as well. Are you a big fan of royals? Do you have them where you live? Who is your favorite royal? Let me know. Thanks for coming along on this video. I really hope that you check out more of my videos. Binge watch. It's a really great way to spend your time. And I hope that you also become a subscriber. 
if you haven't already. But if you have, you're great. Thank you for doing that. Let me put the crown on you. You're awesome. If you want to know more about my life in Denmark, head on over to my blog, mynewdanishlife.com, and you can read about some of my experiences that I've had since moving here, places that we like to go as a family, and how you can make the most out of your family experience in Denmark. I'm really glad that you're here. I hope to see you again. And as always, take care.